Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into the Roblox Academy. In this video, we will be looking at the different types of CCTV cameras. Now, just before we get started, there are many aspects to a CCTV camera. We have covered the analog and IP format in a different video. There should be a link that appears around this um, mark if you haven't watched that and would like to know more about analog and IP cameras. But in this video, we will concentrate on the different styles of cameras. Now, if you're new to CCTV and you've been browsing hundreds and hundreds of types of cameras and are getting a little confused, by the end of this video, you should get a better idea of the three main types of CCTV cameras. And this should allow you to select the right camera for your project. Now, like I said, although there might, it might appear to be hundreds of different types of cameras, I'm going to boil it down and actually tell you there are only three types of cameras. Two of them are domes, the first one being a turret dome, the second being a vinyl dome, and the third one a bullet camera. Now, there are outliers, obviously. You've got cameras such as PTZs and covert specialist cameras, but we will exclude those for this video and concentrate on the ones that fulfill 99% of applications. Now let's start with the turret dome. Um, it's my personal favorite. I've been an installer for about 20 years and managed several, several businesses within the security trade. And the turret dome, which back in the day used to be known as an eyeball dome, is still a favorite of mine. I'm gonna show you why. Now, just before we delve into the advantages and disadvantages of this camera, I just want to tell you a bit more about the different variations you might be seeing when you're browsing online. So let's take the turret dome. Now, all three of these are turret domes, although they look slightly different and the one on the right appears bigger. The, the reasons for the, uh, the, the change in look and size is due to the lens and infrared variation. So on the left hand side, you can see it's a, a slightly smaller camera um, with limited infrared, about 15 meters. In the middle, again, it's still a fixed lens, 30 meter IR. And on the right hand side, which is the largest camera, it, there's a very focal lens. And the reason for the size is to accommodate for the lens. Now you'll see the same thing in with a vinyl dome, you'll see three different sizes. And you'll notice the same thing with the bullet. So don't let that put you off. Um, they are still all the, they, they, are, they fall under the umbrella of that particular style. Another thing to be aware of is that the domes might come with mounting brackets. And while it might appear to look like a different camera, it's not. It's simply a, a dome plus a mounting bracket. Now, the reason you might want a bracket like this is, for example, let's take a narrow alleyway. You want the camera to protrude off the wall and not mount it direct. Um, sometimes when you mount a camera direct onto a wall in a very narrow space like an alleyway, you get a reflection back off the wall. And this is why you might see brackets like this. But it's still a turret dome. And that's the point of telling you this. Here's another example of a vandal dome using a right angle mounted bracket. Again, it's just a vinyl dome plus a right angle mounted bracket. Now let's tune back into the turret dome. If you Google turret, you'll get a definition like a tower within a tower or in military equipment, it's a mechanism within a mechanism. Now, how is this relatable? For those of you who are new to CCTV, I'm just gonna give you a breakdown of what when you open up a turret dome, this is what it looks like. So you have a mounting base, you have the enclosure, the main body, which is the actual camera, it, you can see actually sits on a ball. And then to close that all off, you would have a mounting ring. So that's why it's called a turret, it's because it fits within these three different parts, um, almost like a, a mechanism within a mechanism. Let's tune into the advantages of a turret. The first thing you can see is that your cables are nice and hidden because they fall behind the base plate. If you're fitting in a house, this might look like the cables falling behind the soffit board. Uh, 
with it looking nice and tucked away. Here's an example of an installation in the United Kingdom. You can see the front door on the left. And this is a brilliant choice for this type of application. Not only does the camera look nice and discreet, the cables are hidden and uh, doesn't protrude out too much and it looks like it's meant to be there. In this type of application, the last thing you want is a bullet camera. Uh, mounting a bullet camera not only increases the security risk because you could essentially hang off the bullet and, and push it off. Um, it's it's, it's a, a bullet camera you want to fit out of reach. So this is one of the advantages of a turret is that you've got all the technology nice and compact and it looks, looks the part. Another advantage is let's go back into the design of the turret. Because the camera fits on a ball, you can ceiling or wall mount it. So you can actually fit the same camera on the wall and just maneuver it, uh, maneuver the ball so it's facing the right way round. Now in these pictures, you can see the little box above that's known as an IP enclosure. What that does is that's where the short cable from the camera meets the cable that goes back to your recorder. You don't need to use this. Sometimes you can actually get that cable fed straight through the wall. Other times you can use what's known as a deep base, uh, which is designed for that particular camera. Um, and that allows you to have the junction um, sit right behind the base plate. Another advantage of the turret, which you may or may not be aware of, the reason it looks the way it does is because the lens and infrared are separated by a different ring. This prevents something known as IR bleed, which can occur in other cameras. We're going to go into this a little bit later. So if you look at the images on the left hand side, the reason those two circles exist, the first one is actually an infrared and the one on the right is the lens. Now you have the same idea on the second camera. Um, you can see the lens in the middle and almost a, a square rectangular um, piece which separates the infrared from the lens. That gives you a nice infrared image like is shown. Now, like I said, this isn't the case with all cameras. For example, let's take a, a Vandal Dome where the lens and infrared actually sit within a mechanism and are closed off by a polycarbonate cover. The problem that might exist here is when you have rain, sleet and slow snow settle on the polycarbonate cover and drying up, it creates micro particles and the infrareds can end up reflecting back off that and you get a horrible night image like shown. We're going to go into this in a little bit detail, but just remember that for later on. Another disadvantage of, uh, sorry, let's start with the disadvantages of the turret. So one of the disadvantages is that you can see what way the camera is facing. Now this isn't a disadvantage per se, because you know, oftentimes you want people to know that they are being recorded. When you, someone approaches your driveway, it's good for them to know that there's an infrared glowing and they're under surveillance. But in other, in other applications, this might not be the case. We'll go into that a little bit later on. Another disadvantage of a turret is that it's not completely tamper proof. So at very, very low heights. And I would say this isn't actually a problem in general applications. It's only in very, very high risk environments where you're known for cameras to have been damaged. You might want to avoid the turret because the direction that the turret is facing can be moved about at very low heights. If the camera is within reach, uh, perhaps you might want to avoid the turret. But again, like I said, that's only in high risk environments. Using it for general domestic, it's not an issue. And also remember, before someone lays their hands on the turret dome, you've already caught them on the camera. But like I said, in very high risk environments, you might want to look at another dome. And that leads us on to the Vandal Resistant Dome. And from the name, as you can tell, the reason it's called Vandal Dome is because it's Vandal resistant. The cover that protects the camera mechanism is usually made out of polycarbonate, which is very difficult to break. I mean, to be honest with you, you can break anything with enough force if you're 
forced to do it, but it's a very difficult camera to break. If you are going for this, look out for um, the international standard known as IK10. That gives you some guarantee that you're buying a proper vandal resistant camera. So in very high risk environments, this is a great option. I used to do uh, some consultancy for um, some nightclubs in London and we used to choose the Vandal Dome because they were fitted at a lower height. And you can imagine what the uh, drunk Brits on Fridays are like, um, not, the, not the most pleasant of people. And so the Vandal Dome is what we chose for a number of nightclubs. Uh, we actually solved the night vision issue with a um, technology I'm going to show you later on. So like I said, when the camera's within reach, this might be a good option. The other good thing with a Vandal Dome is because of the non-reflective um, or almost a reflective type of cover, when you're looking up at the Vandal Dome, you can't see what way the lens is facing. This is actually an advantage for certain retail applications in large spaces. If I'm a pickpocket and I look up and I don't know what lens, what way the camera lens is facing, I'm less likely to let's say commit a crime but this is one of the advantages of this type of camera with the dome cover on top and where you might want to avoid the turret otherwise for general retail the turret is still fine it's just uh, something to bear in mind in fact in UK if you go to most large supermarkets you'll find they do use this type of vinyl dome or just a retail dome without the vinyl resistant feature and it's so that people don't know what way the camera is facing. Another advantage is just like the turret dome, you can wall or ceiling mount it. And they do come with uh, mounting options like the right angle bracket you can see. Let's look at the disadvantages of the Vandal. I'm going to give you a little solution to the infrared problem. So you can see uh, these close-up images should give you a better idea of how this camera is designed. You can see there's two infrareds there, the lens in the middle. It's all the same mechanism. And then to close it off, you would normally put the vandal resistant bubble. Like mentioned earlier, when you get dried water and stains on that, this is the result. You end up getting a horrible night picture. The reason this happens is that the infrared, which sits behind the bubble, ends up reflecting off the dirt and bouncing back. The other problem you might have is if it's not sealed properly, you have what's known as IR bleed where the infrared is almost leaking in to the lens. There is a solution for this, which I've shown here. Now, both of these images are on the same site. So it was initially fitted with the Vandal Dome with some infrared, and you can see the type of image the customer was getting. And they switched it over for a low light Vandal Dome, which doesn't rely on the infrared. Now, the other advantage of the low light technology is you get a color picture. While the image on the right hand side may appear to be uh, lit up, if you were to go there at the physical site, it's very, very dark. The reason it's lit up is because of the camera's software processing, which gives you a nice color image like you can see here. So just bear that in mind. If you're going to use a Vandal Dome, don't depend on the infrared. Other manufacturers seem to have done a better job at the design, but I would just say generally avoid using the infrared on the Vandal Dome. If it's well lit up, uh, just one, sorry, one note, I should have mentioned that. If you're going to choose a Vandal Dome with a low light feature, manuf each manufacturer has their own proprietary technology. They call it all sorts of things, owl vision, dark vision, and whatever vision you want to give it. But the idea is the same. It's that the camera operates at a very low lux level. Uh, we'll touch on this on another video, but just bear that in mind that the low light uh, technology, it does need some light. You can't generally operate that in pitch black. So either some street light or some sort of lamps. You can see here with the image on the right, there are some um, so pillar lights. The reason they chose a vandal dome on this site, by the way, is that's a gate for the residential premises and the dome is fitted on the pillar, which is within reach. Um, like we explained earlier, that's why it's a better idea to use a vinyl dome. And uh, to overcome the infrared problem, you go for one with some low light technology, as long as you have some lighting around the area. 
Finally, and I know we haven't given it much love yet, is the bullet camera, which is the original type of CCTV camera. For those old people like me who've been fitting these for many, many, many years, um, you would have known early in the back in the day, the bullet camera was the original type of CCTV camera. You would have a body camera sit inside a housing, plus a lens, plus an infrared lamp, and those four or five components is what would make up the bullet camera. These days, it's all built into one nice piece of kit. You will see the bullet camera still used heavily in commercial environments, and that's because it's a great visual deterrent. Compared to the domes, this one looks like a bad boy. Another advantage of the bullet is you get full motion on the brackets. Um, it's slightly easier to maneuver in different angles. Again, great for commercial and large spaces, warehouses and shopping aisles and warehouse aisles. Um, bullets a great option for that. Another advantage is like the turret these days, they have the infrared and lens separator and that gives you a great night image as shown. By the way, just like the Vanal Dome, the bullet and turrets also can come with a low light technology option where you get a color image at night as opposed to a black and white. So we'll touch on this on another video in regards to night vision, but just bear that in mind as any of these cameras can come with the low light technology, but you do have to have some lighting, some street light to uh, light it up, not a lot, and you will get a nice color image. Another advantage of the bullet is because of the size, you can actually squeeze um, all types of lens variations. So most ANPR cameras, that is your number plate recognition cameras, will almost always be a bullet. That's because the size of the camera allows for this type of technology to be packed in. Disadvantages of a bullet. I know many of you are buying kits online, etc. And I would just say if you are buying kits with bullets, just avoid fitting them too low. You want to move, this should ideally be completely out of reach, but that's one disadvantage of the bullet is aesthetically, you might not want something protruding out your soffit board. So for example, here where we've used a turret dome in a domestic installation, the bullet might look a little bit ugly. Not only is it a little bit ugly, it can you can yank that off if it's within reach. So it prevents a, it's a security risk. It's okay for higher fitting. Um, for and therefore it's a great choice for a commercial. That's it, we're all done. Just before we finish off, let's do a quick summary. Turret Dome, my personal favorite and should generally be a first choice for most of your applications, whether it's residential or commercial. You can wall or ceiling mount it. You've got a good lens and IR separator for a great night vision. Don't forget these cameras also come with a low light technology if you want color image at night, but you do need to have some street light. I would say avoid this camera in very, very high risk areas. Instead, use uh, dome number two, known as the Vanal Dome. And again, you can use this in retail, but just be aware that people will know what way the camera is facing. Vanal Dome, great for very high risk environments, nightclubs, public places. In fact, you'll see a lot of councils in the UK and different countries choose the Vandal style of camera for their public spaces because it's a high security camera. Uh, it can be wall or ceiling mounted and good for retail environments because you can't see what way the lens is facing. Don't depend on the infrared on this camera unless you're going for a super duper expensive and the manufacturer is guaranteed a great night vision. Instead, I would say is fit this camera where there is some light and use the low light technology. Um, so we can look at the lux level and should be able to measure that up. Other than that, it's a great choice. Finally, bullet. Great visual deterrent, uh, wall or ceiling mountable, lens and IR separator with great night vision. Again, this should also come with a low light technology option if you do need uh, for that. Uh, advanced features like ANPR cameras, you'll almost always have to go for a bullet due to the size. And also if you want very, very large lenses, again, you'll have to depend on a bullet type of camera. Do not mount this camera too low. Try and have it at least out of reach. If not, maybe slightly taller, maybe at 12 foot or so. That's it. So now we've touched on analog or IP technology in our previous video. This has covered the style of camera. I hope you've gained enough information to know 
more about CCTV and pick the right camera for your job. We're going to also look at night vision and the lens and megapixel in our future videos. Thank you for watching. I will say if you do have any particular types of videos or ideas or interests within CCTV you want us to cover, it doesn't have to be technical related. Perhaps if you're starting up a CCTV business and want to know more about something in particular, please let us know. Um, I personally have over two decades of experience with this. I grew up fitting these cameras. What a sad life, but that's the truth. Um, and so I can give you any information that, that might be of help to you. And finally, I would say we've got a Patreon channel. These videos are completely free. But if you do want to support and get some VIP access and direct contact with us, please consider supporting us on our Patreon page. And there's also an email address if you want to contact me directly. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day.